watching News 8. CPA Tom Walpole is back with us. Tom, as always, good to see you. Mark, always good to be here. All right, uh, the topic, though, not a good one for, mm -hmm. for folks when you think about it, but it does happen. Disaster planning is what we're talking about. We've seen with the coverage of Hurricane Florence what uh, disasters can do to people. Right. We've seen it around these parts with things like ice storms and massive snowstorms. Right. Let's begin right there uh, and talk about things to have ready in preparation of a big disaster. Okay, around here, a lot of times you're going to get the snowstorms, and a lot of people aren't going to evacuate, they're going to stay home. Yep. So if you do, make sure you have enough food in the house, enough perishable food for five to seven days, keep that around. Canned goods, everybody has that. Uh, keep water, several days worth. Sometimes water is going to be compromised, you don't know. Keep a flashlight in case power's off. Uh, keep gas around both for cooking and possibly for heat. Uh, you might have propane heat in the house, you can use that, or propane cooking. And, uh, you know, consider getting a generator. Mm -hmm. for around here. Right. Uh, let's talk about the alternative. You can't stay, you got to go. And this is important. Uh, the term you've got here is a go box. Right. What, do we, what do we put in this? You want to have a go box so that you can get, get something right away in case you have to evacuate. And things you want to have in there are your insurance policies, things along those lines, important documents that can't be replaced if there's a flood or something like that, your birth certificate, passport, those types of things. Mm -hmm. An important thing is going to be cash. A lot of times, uh, credit card machines are going to be down, so you're going to have to pay for things with cash when you get out. And you want to have that to take care of things, uh, buy groceries, buy gas for the car, uh, keep an extra set of keys with you so you can get back in, uh, a flash drive of any important files for mm -hmm. things like that, and also a list of important numbers. And one of the things you want to have on there are phone numbers. Let's talk about having an emergency fund because this is a critical component as well. Right. Cash is two things. One is, you know, to get out if you have to make a run for it, but the other is afterwards you have to have an emergency fund to pay for things. If there's damage to the house, you're going to have to have insurance deductibles and those things. Yep. So start building that emergency fund now. A conversation with your employer, what are some of the things you should talk about in, in, in that regard ahead of a disaster? Okay. Along those lines, will you be paid in case there's a disaster? Yep. Will your health insurance be in place? What do you have to do as far as vacation time and sick time? Will those things all be covered? You should get that thing, uh, get that straightened out first. Really important questions. And, and finally, a federal disaster area. When we use that term, what, do, what does it mean? How does it apply to us? If you're in a federal disaster area, banks can waive late fees. They can give you better lending arrangements. You can take a... Uh, a tax deduction and your tax return a year sooner for things like that mm -hmm. and you're also possible uh, to qualify for repair uh, loans and grants. One final thought and, and I love this term folks around here will appreciate it the Kodak moment. Yes take pictures of everything if you know you might be in a disaster area it's going to be important if you have to have insurance come in and make things right mm -hmm. you want to show how things were before the disaster. Tom thank you. My pleasure. Appreciate it. If you missed any of our conversation we are sharing it online You'll find it at rochesterfirst.com.